Oh, hi there. I'm just out here strolling around after we got done slaying these demons, looking for some high runes. Oh, look at this. There's one. A cham. There's another one right there. A burr rune. Oh, you say you don't really find high runes strewn all amongst the battlefield? Well, if you're not really finding a lot of high runes, maybe you're just doing a little thing here and there, just a little bit wrong. So today, I'm going to give you my best advice on things that people do wrong, why they don't find high runes. Now, everybody needs high runes for things like Enigma, for Grief, if you're making your Infinity for any of your caster characters, these high runes are so incredibly in demand. Everybody wants them, everybody needs them, but sometimes they're not exactly the easiest to find. But you do notice, I don't know if you ever uh, see this as well in different groups, it seems like the same people are always finding high runes and maybe you're not. That's okay, there could just be some little stuff that you are doing a little bit wrong here and they're just limiting your opportunity in order to find them. So right now, we're gonna jump into the first reason. And that is, you're just farming the wrong locations. Now, there are some spots where you can get really good gear like your Shaco, Arachnid's Mesh, Oculus, all this stuff for your Sorceress. You can get area space for your Barbarian and all different kinds of things like that. But, when you're doing these areas, you're probably not gonna find high runes. That's when you're doing things like Moat Trick and Mephisto, maybe you're running Pindle, maybe you're running Andariel. Yes, there's always a small opportunity to find high runes anywhere in the game, luck does exist, but these areas are generally not known for finding high runes because you're just targeting one boss or maybe a small pack, taking them out and hoping to get those uniques or whatever you're really trying to get there in order to get better gear for your character. So I'm not saying you don't need to run these areas. They definitely have their purpose and they are definitely good areas. I run them all the time, I'm gonna be perfectly honest. But if you're doing these over and over and over and over and over and over again, you're not really gonna get hardly any high runes or maybe none at all in that manner. The next reason that could cause you not to find as many high runes as you would really like to is that is you are prioritizing magic find too much. Now you got to remember you got to switch to a little bit different mindsets when you're farming and trying to get high runes than when you're going after like I said earlier Moat Trick and Mephisto. Maybe instead of having a full inventory full of magic find small charms maybe you want to swap a bunch of those out for some skill or grand charms that's going to increase your damage which then is going to increase your kill speed if you increase your kill speed by just 10 percent you got to remember you're increasing your rune drop chance by 10 percent and that 10 percent better chance honestly could be the difference between when you find a high rune and you not finding one and besides just the charms you could also go up and look at the gear maybe you got some war travelers on and this might be one that you don't think about because you're trying to prioritize too much magic find but if you have more survivability that will actually increase your kill speed in some ways if you have more resistances on your boots more life instead of that magic find if you are at lower risk of dying then you can play less safe you can dive bomb right in there and just take monsters right out. Instead of playing back, playing a little more safe, it ends up killing a little bit slower. So even though you might think that, oh, my caster's not going to get any more damage on the boots, why even bother, blah, 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 putting on boots that could actually add to your survivability will actually increase your kill speed. Not to mention, it takes a long time to die, revive yourself, create a new game, get back in there. So if you really, really are wanting to find high runes, make sure you really take a look at each item slot. Make sure you're not sacrificing too much to get magic find on there, regardless of whether it's increasing damage or increasing survivability. Next here is one that I really used to do all the time, and I still kind of do because I like playing with people online sometimes you know, getting out in the game, even just with random people. And that's it, you're playing in games and you're all doing the same objective and going out and killing monsters in the same place all at the same time. Now, I know this does seem a little bit off because obviously playing online, you want to play with people and I get it, I do too, it is fun. And also when you're doing those chaos runs, those bail runs to get experience, that is obviously a very good thing. But if you're doing that type of thing, eight people in the game, 
then you do know, and everybody kind of realizes this, you have to fight with eight people to try to grab the high room that does drop, or maybe these other people are kind of carrying the game for you, the hammered in, the Javazan in the cow game, slaughtering everything super fast. So you gotta make sure that you're not necessarily in a game where you're fighting with too many people in the same area, or maybe other people are just killing all of the monsters faster than you can. So another example of this, besides just like the chaos example where, you know, everyone's running through the chaos as fast as they can to get experience, so you're not able to grab the high runes. Another example would be, like I mentioned there, the Javazan in a cow game. Now, if you jump into cow games and everybody's laying waste to all the cows, let's say you do 80 cow runs in a week or something like that. Well, you didn't actually do 80 cow runs if you're only killing one eighth of the cows in that run. You really did 10 cow runs. And actually what you were doing was spending all your time going to the next game, waiting for someone to get the leg, waiting to make the portal again and to get back in there. See, you're not actually doing a bunch of cow runs, you're doing a save and exit simulator. So make sure you don't fall victim to that one right there. What's kind of a better option for that is you'll see these quote unquote random MF games where one person will go off around the pits, one person will make cows, one person will make chaos. So they're all playing in a game together. Y'all can communicate and stuff like that, but you all aren't fighting over each individual drop. Next up could it be one of the most common problems with kind of like more newer people or returning people and that's that you're not playing the right builds in order to get high runes. I'll hear it all the time. People will ask me questions like what's the best dual spec sorceress or something like that or you know anything along those lines and I would always recommend you want to go with the types of builds that you're going to kill monsters the fastest. If you're going dual spec that means let's just for example say you're going Hydra Frozen Orb Sorceress then you're not really maxing out the damage or maxing out the, the kill speed on either one of them. A jack of all trades is an expert at none. In my opinion, especially if you're trying to get high runes, you're gonna be much better off maxing out one build as much as possible and then target farming areas that that build is then best for. And you don't necessarily have to have the absolute best builds in the entire game either. Yes, we know Javazan's great for high runes, the Hammered In, now Fist of Heavens is pretty darn good. Blizzard Sorceress has always been pretty good, but you could even do stuff like the new Nova Sorceress. I got several high runes this ladder with using that Nova Sorceress and target farming specific areas that it would be good for for finding high runes, such as killing ghosts in different packs on going down to the Countess, hitting the ghost packs in the Arcane Sanctuary, and even you can go out to Talrash's Tombs or any of the places in Act 1, not even 85 areas, just the main thing is killing monsters as fast as possible. But if you're doing, like I said before, dual spec in your rock in the Hydra Sorceress, yeah, Hydra is good, but you're going to be stuck killing things like just moat tricking Mephisto over and over again and stuff like that. Areas that aren't good at finding high runes. So make sure you got the right build for finding high runes if you're looking for them. Up next could be probably the most prevalent, the most common one that I hear all the time, whether they're talking about just finding better gear or high runes, and that's that people are just playing in games completely solo by themselves. Now, if you're online and you're playing solo, you are going to limit the amount of high runes you find by like one tenth. I don't remember the exact number. Editor Phil's going to throw up here. We'll throw the drop odds on one of the most sought after high runes here. We'll go with the Burr rune. I'm going to show it from players one difficulty and I'll show it next to players eight difficulty. So a full game. The drop odds are so much better when you have more people in the game. So if you're in a game solo by yourself, you're going to have a real hard time at finding high runes. Now I know, like I said before, luck is luck and you definitely can. I even found a Vex rune just on a playthrough with a Druid earlier in the year here, but it's going to be so astronomically small of an odds of something like that happening that you really can't count on it. You really, really, really are going to need to try to get into a game with more people. And now the last one here is going to get me a ton of pissed off comments down below, but it really is completely honest. You just really aren't playing enough time in order to find high runes. And I get it, I get it. The grass doesn't stop growing, you gotta get out and cut it. The kitchen doesn't clean itself. The kids won't stop whining at you. The wife won't stop bitching at you to go do stuff, fix this. The door is creaking, my tire's low. I get it, I get it, I really, really do. But Diablo 2 is not one of those super easy games that you don't have to put a lot of time into. You can just, 
you know, sit down and not even really worry about it, smash a couple buttons for five minutes, and you got good gear and blah, blah, blah. It just really is not one of those games. The type of game Diablo is, it's where you play it, you play it, you play it, and you get super, super excited, mega hype when that sick drop comes, when you finally do find that item you're looking for. That's what makes the item finding in this game so rewarding because it is so hard to find these items. You know they're there, you know they exist, and eventually, if you do things right, you will find them. So you either need to play more time or just have more realistic expectations on what you're gonna find. So you don't get upset when you don't find this particular item, that particular item, this rune or that rune. You don't necessarily even need a bunch of high runes for a lot of builds to make the game super fun and to really get out there and absolutely slaughter monsters. But obviously, it'd be a lot cooler if you do have those high runes. All right, so now you're finding high runes. Why don't you check out this video right up over here to help you find that SOJ that you've been looking for for a long time.